Hey, what's going on guys? In this video series, we're going to be building a back-end GraphQL server. Now, I will warn you that some of the concepts in this series are a bit advanced compared to a lot of my recent videos, uh, but if you're comfortable with REST APIs and JSON, Node.js, you should be able to follow along even if you've never used GraphQL before. Okay, this is going to be kind of a GraphQL introduction project, and we're going to be using Express, which is a Node.js framework, along with a module called Express GraphQL, and this will allow us to send and receive data through GraphQL. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so before we get started with the project, let's talk a little bit about what the hell GraphQL actually is. So in simple terms, it's an application layer query language or a query language for your API. And it was open sourced by Facebook in 2015. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of SQL or structured query language. It's a language built for querying and, and getting data from an SQL database or a relational database like MySQL. Well, SQL is a data level language, so you query the database directly. But with GraphQL, we query the application layer or the server, which allows us to uh, use virtually any kind of database or data store that we want. We can even use just hard coded data. Uh, we could use an SQL database, no SQL like MongoDB, just about anything. All right. Another huge benefit to GraphQL is that it provides almost a blueprint of your data uh, in your API and it gives clients the power to ask for exactly what they want. One problem with a standard REST API is that you may only want, for instance, a user's first name, but with the way that a REST API is usually set up, it forces you to fetch all the user data, which is virtually wasting bandwidth and other resources. So with GraphQL, we can just ask for exactly what we want and nothing more. So this is inc incredibly powerful. We can also make mo um, multiple requests at once, which saves even more on resources. All right, so let's take a look at a very simple query. So on the right here, we have an example of our data on our server. So we just have a user. It's in JSON format, uh, has an ID, a name and an email. Now, if we look at the query, it looks very, very similar to the data, which is really nice. OK, so we're saying we want a user with the ID of 100 and we're saying we want just the name and the email. OK, so this is very valuable that we can just request just the name and email. You can imagine if there were, you know, dozens or even hundreds of fields and, um, you know, with a standard REST API, a lot of the times we'll have to get all of that data. But GraphQL allows us to uh, specifically ask for just the name and email. All right, so we can also fetch multiple resources. So over here we have our user with the ID, name, and email, and then the user has an array of posts, okay? And, and we have a bunch of objects. In this case, there's just a title, but just imagine that there's you know a lot of um, post fields here. So if we look at the query again, saying we want user 100, we want the name, email, we also want the posts of the user, and we're saying we just want the title from the posts, okay? So again, we can just specifically um, you know, request what fields we want from the post array. So GraphQL does also use a typing system. So here we're saying we, we have a user with the type of user, which is a, 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 a type that we defined over here. OK, so we have a user, which is an object, has a name, which is a string an age, which is an integer and then friends, which is an array of users. All right, we'll get more into types along the way. So graphical or graph IQL is a, a, a very handy tool for interacting with your GraphQL server. Uh, it's an interactive IDE or integrated development environment. We can test, we can run queries, uh, mutations. It runs right in the browser. It, uh, it has things like syntax highlighting, error reporting, um, hinting and other things. So this is what we'll be working with to test all of our queries and mutations. All right, now you can use GraphQL with just about any popular modern language. Um, we'll be working with JavaScript, of course, and, and Node.js and Express, but there's clients for C Sharp, Java, Python, PHP, just about any language you can think of. All right, so even though GraphQL is a relatively new technology, it is something that's becoming extremely popular among some of the biggest websites on the Internet. Um, Facebook mobile apps have actually used GraphQL since 2012. It's popular for mobile apps because we can send much lighter requests from being able to spe uh, specifically request things instead of, you know, getting a giant payload back with a bunch of stuff that we don't need. 
All right, so let's take a look at the plan for this project in this series. It's not going to be too long. I, I would estimate maybe three, four videos. Uh, we're going to bang them all out at once, so you're not going to have to wait a week between each video. Um, and, and again, we're building the back end. This is going to be a back end server. We're not going to have any kind of UI. We may do that in another series. Um, and of course, you can use anything for the UI. You could use standard JavaScript and Ajax. Um, anything that allows you to make HTTP requests. Uh, React, there's actually a really popular library for working with GraphQL called Apollo. Uh, there's actually a few of them. Apollo is the one that, that I prefer. Um, but we will definitely look into building a front end. But this series is specifically building a back end. No UI or anything like that. All right, so we will be setting up uh, Express, which is a Node.js backend framework. We'll be using Express GraphQL, which is a, a, a Node module. We'll be creating a schema file, and that's where we'll put all of our queries and mutations. Now, as far as a mutation, this just means that we're, we're building a response that's going to change the data in some way. So if we want to make a, a post request to our API to update, I'm sorry, to add data to the server, that would be done through a mutation. Okay, same thing with update and delete. We're also going to be implementing something called JSON server, which I actually did a video on, uh, I think a couple weeks ago, and it gives us a mock uh, REST API. So basically like a fake REST API, and that's going to act as our as our um, database. Okay, so like I said, you can use any kind of database you want with GraphQL. You can use MongoDB and use Mongoose. Um, you can use, you know, MySQL, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to be using JSON server. We're also going to have complete CRUD functionality. So we'll be able to create, read, update and delete. OK, it's going to be a, a customer system, uh, a customer um, management database. And we're going to be doing all of our testing with graphical, OK, with the, the uh, graphical interface. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoy this series. Like I said, it is a bit advanced, so I know I've been getting a lot of beginners lately that are just getting into front end web development. So this may be a little uh, tricky for you, but I would still suggest watching it just to see, you know, how things come together. And, and um, you know, you may not understand every line of code, but I think it's a it's a good uh, introduction to GraphQL for anybody. All right. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.